Hey, it's Mike here, and today, mucus. Well, really, the main cause of mucus, according to Eric Berg. Really, this is just now the official Eric Berg response channel. I think we're at video number four now. For those of you that don't know, Eric Berg is Dr. Eric Berg because he's a chiropractor, he's not a medical doctor, and he uses that to seemingly not cite really any research ever, which is the opposite of what I try to do. As you will see, I will cite a ton of research in this video. Anyway, Eric Berg provides a ton of content to respond to because he's always pushing a low carb pro animal fat diet. And in this case, he even goes as far as to say that the solution partly is to stop being vegan, and we'll get into all of that. And he makes a ton of other demonstrably false claims. Anyway, let's just get to the video, and really quickly, this video is sponsored by Life Fuel, which we'll talk about in a little bit. It's a delicious daily essential shake that they offer, so let's go. Anyway, here is Eric Berg's video, which was originally the real cause of constant mucus. It's now been upgraded to the all caps, real cause of constant phlegmy, parentheses, mucus throat. I will say he is a wildly popular health YouTuber and he's probably better at titles than me. He tells people what they wanna hear and he's able to crank out so many videos because he doesn't cite any research. Okay, I just gotta stop griping here. Talking about tracing it back to the most likely cause, here he is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one symptom, chronic mucus uh, generation in your throat and just trace it back to the most likely cause. And quickly it becomes clear, I know a lot of people wanted to have a really mucus focused video, that's why you clicked, but it becomes clear that this is actually going to be a acid reflux disease video, which I think is really interesting and I've wanted to do a video on for a while. Now you could have an allergy, you could have a virus in your sinuses producing this mucus, um, but a more likely cause would be something related to two other symptoms, which I'm gonna get to the root cause, but one would be GERD, acid coming up through this valve at the top of the stomach and it's coming up through your esophagus. Or this other condition called LPR. So he's saying that mucus is caused by that excess stomach acid in conditions like GERD and LPR, which is really where GERD graduates up into your throat where the acid goes and becomes a different condition. But I'm just gonna be mentioning GERD a lot because it's the most common one, the main one, and we really need to hit the basics of that. And GERD stands for gastroesophageal reflux disease, which is like your classic acid reflux, but it's sort of gone into a disease state, it's that bad. From this study looking around the world, the US has one of the highest age adjusted levels of GERD in the world. And this is really a Western world issue. A lot of other Western diet countries have this as well. And in the US, we're talking about from this book, a percentage of 18 to 27% of US people having GERD, which is huge. And I do remember watching TV as a kid and just seeing TV ads be dominated by like Pepto-Bismol and other acid reflux products. So clearly there's a demand. I have the goulash, I have the fries, I have the cheesecake, and now I'll have the tums. And most people with GERD are nerds. Kidding, but also not kidding because the non-erosive subtype of GERD is the most common, which is referred to as nerd. They already have a disease. You don't have to call them nerds. Actually, there's nothing wrong with being a nerd. Now, I do wanna say there's a bunch of other short-term causes of mucus, which we're not gonna cover here, and I probably will do another mucus video if you guys want a follow-up. But I also have to mention that there are a lot of causes of of GERD as well that are not gonna be covered in this video, such as H. pylori infection or having a hiatal hernia where like your upper stomach valve goes higher than it should. But I'm gonna go ahead and support Eric Berg here with more research that he used in his video from this 2020 study from Japan. Yes, there is a connection between GERD and mucus. Yes, sputum production was associated with GERD as well as post-nasal drip was, twice the incidence. But perhaps more importantly is the potential mechanistic connection that has been explored in some studies. As our researchers paraphrase, several experimental studies have suggested that the activation of parasympathetic signaling by distal or lower esophageal acid 
induces airway mucus hypersecretion. So yes, I do agree with Dr. Berg here. I would say it's one of the many causes of chronic mucus, apparently from the research. And ignoring the other causes for now, it looks like we're going down the GERD wormhole, the GERD hole, let's go. This is where our agreement ends because here comes the anti-carb sentiment, here he is. The biggest offender for this problem is grains, okay, grains. Now, what's wild is that if you look this up, um, they will tell you to consume grains to improve your acid reflux. But in reality, you're gonna find that makes a lot worse. Yes, they will tell you to eat grains. Who's they, like the deep state? <laughs> I don't know what kind of conspiracy stuff he's trying to muck up here. But uh, yeah, based off no research, he's telling you that grains are bad for this condition. There's a lot of things in grains that are inflammatory. Typical grain has like 20 or more times the omega-6 than it does the omega-3, which are anti-inflammatory. So you're basically dumping a lot of inflammation in your system when you consume grains. Yeah, you just said that grains are inflammatory, pointed to the omega-6s, which honestly, grains are generally low fat. There's not that much fat in grains, so I don't know why he's pointing to that as like a fear thing. But are grains really dumping inflammation? Well, first of all, whole grains especially are a great source of fiber. Fiber is associated with lower GERD risk. And, and whole grains are just associated with lower mortality in general, so no, those in particular are not gonna be dumping inflammation on your body. But of course, refined grains are not as good. However, we do have studies that look at all grains and GERD more specifically. This paper took 260 GERD patients and then 260 controls and then looked at what they eat and the differences. They found, quote, high intake of meat, oils, salt, and calcium is associated with an increased risk of reflux events. I now have the myelin up. Well, high intake of protein, carbohydrate, calories, blah, 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 on and on, including grains and potatoes are associated with reduced risk. In particular, the grain and potato group was associated with a 40% lower risk, which was huge in terms of the spectrum of the study winning there. I do wanna mention, not mentioned by him at all, salt was really horribly associated with curd. So definitely don't forget that. Let's take a quick break with our sponsor. We got Life Fuel's All-in-One Essentials Shake, which is loaded with a ton of things. I mean, heck, they got probiotics, antioxidants, super green, digestive enzymes, and vitamins and minerals, including like D3, B12, K2, and on and on. When I was doing the taste test for this product, I tried out the chocolate and I was like, yeah, I can recommend this to my mouth and also you guys. And I would say that this is a really good way for people to cover their bases who are, you know, in modern times, super busy, too busy to, you know, focus on getting every single nutrient that they need in every meal. You know, just one scoop of this reaches 50% of your daily requirement for like 27 vitamins and minerals. I think it's fair to say that most people, regardless of their diet, are not getting every single nutrient that they need. So this is a cool way to lower that risk. And I do like how they threw in things like a berry blend of just straight up strawberry, raspberry, blueberry, sour cherry, elderberry, and cranberry to get some legit antioxidants. Finally, it is backed by a 100% satisfaction guarantee. And if you would like to try it, you can go to lifefuel.com and use the code Mike15 for 15% off, or just go to the link below and it will automatically be applied at checkout. All right. And next we're gonna cover how one of the solutions is just to stop going vegan, he says. But I do wanna say that I decided to respond to this video before I even saw that he mentioned vegan stuff because I was like, this looks interesting. I know he's gonna say some bogus stuff. Anyway, here he is. Now, another big cause of this entire problem, and I'm talking about low stomach acids, is a vegan diet, okay? When someone's a vegan, many times they consume a lot of grains and a lot of foods that tear up their digestive system. And they don't consume a lot of animal fats. We covered the grain thing, but oh, oh, you like animal fat? Well, let's look to this study that took 50 GERD sufferers 
and mapped their GERD suffering over 24 hours, as well as their intake of various dietary nutrients, and their conclusion, quote, of all dietary nutrients, cholesterol enhances the most the perception of intraesophageal acid reflux events in patients with GERD. Carbohydrates, no association found. Cholesterol, the worst. But he actually is really accepting of vegan diets, clearly, because he says that, oh, a vegan diet can be done the right way. Honestly, that's a, that's a pretty good step in the right direction. Now, that being said, there is a correct way to do a vegan diet. So I'm not opposed to doing it correctly, but I am opposed to doing it with all the different fake meats and the soy protein isolates. Oh, really? With the uh, protein isolate claim, I'm somebody who promotes whole foods and I still think that he is wrong, especially because we have a study like this one that directly compares plant versus animal protein and reflux symptoms. And they even use things like tofu and soy steak. Now it's a 2018 study with 160 patients who have heartburn and the results are quote, vegetable proteins are associated with a lower number of refluxes, particularly acid refluxes, and with a reduced number of symptoms during the first postprandular after meal hour. From this table in particular, after eating the animal protein, there was three times the acid exposure time, two times the number of reflux events, and two times the acid reflux, all highly statistically significant. And I would love to see a randomized control trial of people put on a vegan diet, with GERD and see what happens. But this study is the closest we'll get, and that is this JAMA one on a 90% plant-based diet, Mediterranean diet with alkaline water. You know how I feel about alkaline water. I've talked about it in the past in my Ravana video, for example, but this is one case where it might actually have a real purpose. But they say patients were given alkaline water and told to eat 90 to 95% plant-based diet consisting of vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and nuts with less than five to 10% from animal-based product. The results, well, they saw a clinically meaningful improvement in 63% of the patients. And there was also a proton pump inhibitor group. That's your classic medication for GERD. And they got about 50% with improvement. So even though there wasn't a statistically significant difference between those two, the plant-based diet was doing best. And I also wanna mention another important benefit of plants for GERD, and that is how there can be oxidative stress throughout the throat based off that acid that's not supposed to be there. And antioxidants, of course, buffer oxidative stress. And you know, plants have on average 64 times as many antioxidants as animal products do. But this is a situation where eating those high antioxidant foods could literally coat your throat a little bit with antioxidants when you really need it, where people have that acid reflux right after eating. And let's put some faces to all that research and look at some people who are eating a whole food vegan diet and helped their GERD out from forks over knives, whole food vegan diet. We have a few cases. The first one said, quote, I had severe acid reflux, always had a roll of Tums and a bottle of Imodium on hand. Then he says at the end, I haven't taken an antacid or upset stomach medication since I began my whole food plant-based journey over six years ago. This one says I no longer suffer with gout, chronic headaches and back pain and GERD. And finally, this one who had their GERD go away also saw a 100 point drop in LDL, 40 pounds lost and an insane triglyceride drop. Now we need to get into his claims, which are quite interesting. And I have heard them before about low acid actually being the cause of GERD. So let's talk about the most likely cause of this valve not closing, giving you this GERD or LPR. Not too much acid, it would be an acid deficiency, low hydrochloric acid. When the acid or concentration of acid in your stomach is lower, the valve um, doesn't close that properly. In fact, it'll, it can open up. But when the acid starts increasing, when you start digesting things like proteins, the top of the valve should close very, very nice and tight. So he's now saying that chronic mucus's main cause is GERD and the main cause of that is a low acid. But the way to get your acid back is to take um, something to start building up the hydrochloric acid. And the best remedy is uh, betaine hydrochloride. And this isn't new, a lot of hydrochloric acid supplement brands have been pushing this angle for years. However, not only did he not use research to back his claims here, just looking through the literature, searching a bunch of combinations, there's just a complete dearth or lack 
of research here. WebMD goes as far as to say that betaine hydrochloride, one of the formulations, is used for many conditions, including stomach acid, but there is no good scientific evidence to support any use. Wachelly finds out that hydrochloric acid is often extracted from grains. Oh my god. There doesn't appear to be any evidence that people who are suffering from GERD have lower stomach acid, which would be the case in leading to their stomach flap being open, like he says. I think it goes without saying that there could be risks of taking hydrochloric acid as well. For example, if you have an acid-based issue, you would be increasing your acid. Anyway, it continues pooping on vegans. When someone's a vegan, because they're not consuming a lot of animal proteins, um, they might not have the triggering of this hydrochloric acid. Again, a totally baseless claim, which brings me back to this study, which really does show a trend. We'd have to do true research on this, but that Western high animal protein countries are the ones with the highest level of GERD, while the more plant-based countries have lower levels of GERD. But we can actually talk about studies on why that could be the case from this BMJ paper. You know, high fat meals make reflux worse. You know, it happens faster and the intensity and severity of heartburn was significantly greater with higher fat meals. And other research shows that lower fat meals do not have that same effect with acid exposure time. I mean, it's really the same stuff that we saw in that animal versus plant protein one. Everything was worse and longer when people ate animal protein. So no, vegans aren't lacking enough animal protein to make hydrochloric acid and then leading to some weird ironic cause of GERD. I'm sorry, there's no proof of that. There also could be some BMI issues related with that upper stomach valve from this paper. It decreased lower esophageal sphincter pressure is involved in the progression of GERD in overweight individuals consuming a high cholesterol diet. Could also be an actual mechanical issue of having more fat on the body leading to certain pressures that can create this issue from this study. The incidence of GERD is strongly associated with excess body weight, reflecting the pathophysiological relevance of the abdominothoracic pressure gradient. In other words, stomach and chest pressure? Getting the sunset on me, weird reflections. Um, but it's just a bad idea to tell people to get off a vegan diet when it is the one most associated with the normal BMI from the Adventist studies, the only diet group that was in the normal BMI on average. And it's also just worth mentioning that there are some other factors that can cause that, which make quite a bit of sense from this study out of China. Some things as simple as eating too fast, eating too much, eating spicy food, or as I personally experienced, laying down too soon after eating are all associated with GERD. In conclusion, Berg is wrong about GERD. He crashed into a GERDberg trying to make this mucus case. It's not grains and it's not a vegan diet that caused mucus. I'm sorry, it's not. You know, a lot of his claims in the dietary direction he's pushing people is just outright wrong. I mean, cholesterol was highly associated from that study, grains and potatoes were associated with 40% less GERD risk. And in terms of animal versus plant protein, animal was arguably over twice as bad for all of the reflux symptoms. So it appears that he is promoting the opposite diet of what is good for GERD. I mean, again, we had that plant-based study that was 90% plant-based, at least showing improvement in 63% of people. So he's wrong. Finally, his low acidity cause is just really not backed by science, really not. Anyway, let me know down below what you think, and if you would want a real mucus-related video, I'll go, I'll go there all the way up your nose and get the research. <laughs> anyway, also if you want to try Life Fuel, you can just click the link below and I'll automatically apply 15% off at checkout or use Mike15 on the website. All right, thanks for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you in the next one.